And the last two weeks for the Broncos have been incredibly, I would say disheartening is the word. And I talked about this a little bit last week, um, but it got so much worse today. And it's like Broncos fans were prepared for this season, I think, to not be good. Um, you know, everyone is like, okay, we're finally doing the rebuild thing. We are going and getting a young quarterback. We're kind of getting off of some of the older players, uh, and trying to start fresh and bring in a youth movement. And so was there, there was like an acceptance three, four months ago that the Broncos are going to take a little bit of time. And then, um, something terrible happened, which was that Bo Nix looked really good in the preseason and, uh, gave people a whole lot of hope. And so there was a lot, there was like a general excitement about just, okay, we have this guy, he looks good. Um, We're seeing him make some NFL plays in the preseason. We're seeing him do some stuff. And what's unfortunate for Bo Nix is that this isn't really about him, but the fans are in such a bad place after seeing eight years of bad and boring football that when they went out there today and were as bad and as boring as they've ever been to the point where, as far as I'm concerned, Sean Payton kicked a field goal in the fourth quarter just to make sure they didn't get shut out at home. Um, it's it's like full meltdown mode over here. And, and I think there is still some people being realistic about, you know, the fact that they this is kind of the beginning of the story, not the middle or end. Uh, it's still just you can be bad. You can be boring. Um, but when you combine being bad and boring, it does terrible things to a fan base. And the Broncos have now been that way literally every year since they won the Super Bowl in 2015. And there's very, very, very little patience in this town right now. You do know there's only one answer for boring football. You got to trade for Jameis. (laughs) <laughs> you, gotta get, you gotta put you gotta get some Jameis winston out there that's entertaining football no matter what three i'm touchdowns, in three picks every week you know rk i was gonna throw some zingers your way that just made me sad i'm yeah. sad <laughs> that, that's that's tough man and if you and if you really want to get like really depressing and nihilistic about it it's like if they're this bad you know sean payton's not gonna stick around forever he just got he doesn't have to be around for this and then he's He's wasted this first round pick on a quarterback. You got to start this cycle all over again. You play it forward. Ish. Depressing. Nothing matters, and then we die. Yeah, I, I totally just uh, you know you guys were getting your shots in earlier, um, but I'm a I'm a big fan of the movie Eight Miles. So I just eight miled you guys. I'm like you can't say anything about me that I haven't already said. Uh, um, here, I'll be positive for a second. I, I do think they looked better at the end of last year. And they were much more viable at the end of last year when trying to prop up a decrepit Russell Wilson. I think eventually Bo Nix is going to look competent to maybe even good on some NFL Sundays. I don't have a lot of confidence in, in Vance Joseph, although he, he's looked good. Uh, I'll give him credit through two games. I I picked them, RK, to beat the Seattle Seahawks week one. And with average quarterback play, they probably do. But mm-hmm. I you know, you can't sit Bo Nix. He's 24 years old. He's played a ton of college football. I think once the game maybe slows down for him a little bit and hits some of these easy completions, everything just looks really hard for him right now. He's got some mobility. Like, I still think, even in the AFC West with with the Broncos' schedule, there there are going to be some Sundays where where he looks good enough where you're going to be able to build a case where, yep, we're going to continue to build around him. We're going to go all in this offseason. We've got a bunch of disposable money. Russell Wilson's contract mostly is off the books. So it's just, it's not an overnight thing. And, and to your point, didn't they go like undefeated in the preseason and he yeah. looked fantastic? So people was, people were just like, this is going to carry over fine. Look at our easy schedule to begin the year. And obviously that's not been the case. Yeah, that's what they said about Kenny Pickett last summer too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh... Who's going to be Shadur Sanders or <clears throat> Quinn Ewers? Who, who are you guys picking after? I've... Uh, I've... Uh made a promise to myself in Broncos country that I won't I'm I'm going to take some time before I start talking about that because you know, it's going to come on it's going to tear apart families. Hey, you're you're coming from a place of uh back-to-back I, first round quarterbacks. Yeah, I endured Josh Rosen and talked myself into it after 16 games. You got I mean it's been two I, weeks. like I said, yeah. that's why I said I'm not I'm not going there yet. Kyler Murray forced George quarterback for Sorry, I'm still trying to draft a guy. 
Um, here's my big concerns as it relates to the Broncos. One, and this one is is probably the the more frustrating one is I just think that I expected Sean Payton <clears throat> to be able to put Bo Nix in better positions to succeed, and through two weeks, I just feel like there has not been good game plans for him. And I think, you know, one week you say, okay, like that, that just happens, you know, game plans can sometimes be a roll of the dice back to back weeks. Now where I just Bowden look comfortable. It didn't feel like they played into his strengths and, and he doesn't look like he's playing football until the fourth quarter when the game's still kind of in hand and there's a chance to go, you know, make some plays and bring it back. And he kind of just cuts loose and plays free. Um, and that's what the only times in these last two weeks, in my opinion, that you've seen him like flash, but the other six, you know, six and a half quarters, uh, that we've seen so far and just, he looks like he's playing really tight and thinking a bunch. And there's like a clip today of him in the huddle rattling off one of Sean Payton's 35 word play calls. And like the whole offense is like, what? And he has to redo it. And then they have to call a timeout because they, they didn't get the play in right. And it's just like the the if you were building yourself a belief and a hope in this era of Denver Broncos football it was like okay well Sean Payton is going to be be able to make Bo Nix like his guy and and do everything to make him really comfortable uh and I haven't seen that at all and then the other thing that I think is concerning for me and and I'm I'm not like pulling the plug or anything uh is just that I've yet to see the things that we thought and knew Bo Nix was really good at and you know we knew he was deficient in some other areas and you're hoping that he can get better in those but I haven't seen the things that we we thought he was really good at shine which is like accuracy uh and you know processor and you know making the easy plays easy and and even you know running the ball none of that stuff has shined to me and more than maybe like a one play in a series um so I'm I'm high on the concern meter until I can see just like four or five straight plays of him looking competent. Yeah. I mean, he deserves, he deserves a little bit of benefit of the doubt of grace when we're giving it to Caleb Williams. It's only been two games, but at the same time, I I, like, I'm kind of with you, like a guy who's, who's superpower. If, if there is one is like short term accuracy, like, that works in college if you have better athletes and you're getting the ball in their hands. Like right? that's where your advantage is get them the ball. It's obviously not like that in the NFL. And so, like if if there is not the marriage with Sean Payton scheming him up, and like if you're not a Drew Brees level accurate passer, then I think it's like he doesn't have um, any other major superpowers, right? And so it's kind of like where where is this going to come from? Where where is the upside? For sure. And, you know, uh, Cavante is in the comments saying, RK, it's been two weeks, but relax. Like, I, I think I'm honestly as relaxed as I can be. Um, <laughs> like, 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 I, I, oh, I'm, you relax. <laughs> like I, I, I'm, well, you I'm relaxed, you know, like I, I, all we can do is give it time. And I think seeing Caleb Williams have some of the struggles that he he's had is like uh, a little bit relieving. Um, none of the rookie quarterbacks have really done anything impressive so far. And so you do have to give them time. But like I said, at the same time, I'm, I'm trying, you know, I've been hurt enough now to avoid just having blind faith. Um, so I, I, like I said, I'm trying to just look for a couple things here and there that I'm like, okay, we can hang our hat on that. And that hasn't popped out consistently enough for me yet. So I'm, I'm, Fully in wait and see mode, not pulling any plugs, not freaking out. I, I think I'm relaxed, but we, we I mean, got like, we got to see some stuff soon. This is this is the guy Sean Payton is gonna ride or die with in Denver. Like I don't envision you guys. We joke about the Broncos taking a quarterback again next year. Like that's not gonna happen. Like the, the Denver Broncos are gonna stick with Bonix and Sean Payton as long as they're together and winning or not winning games in Denver. Like. If at any point they moved off of Sean Payton, they'd be moving off of Bonix and, and vice versa. I think it would be they're they're married to each other, for lack of a better term, especially with how old Sean Payton is now and how long he's been in the NFL. Like you have to see this through. And it was always going to be a tough sell when you're in a division with Mahomes and Justin Herbert. But I, I do think, you know, 
there is not the splash plays that you see with like an Anthony Richardson, but I think you could sell people on the efficiency eventually is going to come with mastering the offense. Like I, I think a good comp for him, maybe not as athletic as, as somebody like Alex Smith, who really needed to take time, build a roster up and build his confidence with experience and, you know, winning football. I think you could do that with Bo Nix, but Again, like you're going to need to do that over the course of his entirety of his rookie wage scale contract so you can bulk up your offensive line, your skill players, this defense, get him a competent pass rush. Like to, to, to look at him as a, as a finished product or somebody that has to set the world on fire, I, part of this is, and I know Bronco fans don't want to hear this, like, do you need to wait out some of this like uh, historic run that's happening right now with these AFC quarterbacks like <laughs> Lamar and Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. I just mentioned Herbert. Like, uh, is Bo Nix out doing any of those guys in, until his roster is built up? I, I, I just think that you're you're playing the long game here for better or worse. Well, and and I think it's you're you're like in those situations you're counting on Sean Payton out scheming the right. other side, uh, and and that's again where I'm like, okay, I want to see Sean Payton like design a game plan that makes Bo Nix look good. Um, and, and you mentioned a couple things there. And, and, you know, I obviously when you're having a conversation like this, Bo Nix is going to be the hot button topic. But the bigger problem than anything that we've mentioned so far is just the Broncos, especially on offense, lack of, of overall talent. Um, yeah. There's not a single player on this offense, and I said it th this offseason, so I'm not, again, not panicking here, but there's not a single player on this offense that opposing defensive coordinators are losing sleep about when they're game planning for this team um, coming into the week. And, and so that also, also makes Bo Nix's life a lot harder when he's out there is – there's no like safety blanket great player that's just like okay this guy's gonna get us some some chunks of yardage throughout the game um Cortland Sutton is a, s a solid receiver you know there's a couple you, you have like Jaleel McLaughlin making some plays and, and showing off some speed but other than that like there's no one that is taking the pressure off of Bo with their talent and I think that is probably a bigger problem than any of the other stuff I mentioned all right, we've gotten into my comfort zone here. I don't know how long we've been talking about the Broncos. Could have been 20 minutes. 